Welcome to Best Story Wins. I'm Josh Ritchie, and I'm here with my co-host, Jason Lenko. And today we're here with Zach, who is the CMO at Canva. So Zach, you're the CMO at Canva. What does that mean? What do you do? And could you tell us a little bit about what's interesting about your company? Sure, great to be here with, uh, with you both. Um, I'm Zach and lead marketing uh, at Canva. So for, for those who don't know, Canva is an online design platform and we, we make design accessible. Uh, for, for everyone. So over 130 million people uh, using the platform each and every month these days to create everything from presentations to videos to uh, birthday invitations. Um, so pretty broad uh, user base. And in my role, I lead uh, all things marketing. So brand marketing, PR and comms, product marketing, uh, growth marketing, uh, and, and so on. Awesome. How, uh, when did, when did you realize this was the career path for you? It definitely has been a path that sort of taken shape, I'd say, uh, along the way, my, my dream growing up was actually to be a journalist. So all through high school, uh, I was you know, super obsessed with, with politics and, and, uh, following the news voraciously. Um, I loved writing. And so that was always, uh, always the dream. And so, you know, it was a bit of a, a sort of sideways, um, move falling into, I guess, communications and then, um, you know, more, more recently in the past few years into, into the broader world of marketing. It's a great path. Yeah. Uh, so obviously the name of this podcast is best story wins and the, the term storytelling gets used a lot in marketing. Um, some would say it's overused sometimes the term gets misused. Uh, how would you define as a marketer what, in the context of marketing, what storytelling is and what it isn't? The essence of marketing, I think, is actually telling stories and it's telling stories to different uh, groups of people. Uh, and I think to build uh, a startup, like Canva, you're starting with a narrative and the narrative is this future vision for the way that the world can be. And for us, we launched back in 2013 and, and the idea came about when Mel, our CEO, was teaching design software, uh, you know, to, to support herself while she was going through school. And so was teaching students uh, how to use design software like Photoshop and InDesign software that was, uh, you know, still, still shipped in a box and would cost like hundreds, if not thousands of dollars and, and take months and months and months to learn how to even use the functionality, let alone create something. And so she came up with this idea for uh, a design platform that would be free and easy to use and, and online um, and, and sort of set out to, I guess, uh, pursue that vision. But uh, that takes a long, long time and um, many, many, many people, uh, you know, to, to get in, on board and, and sort of help bring it to life from investors to advisors to early team, uh, you know, to press. Um, the, the list goes on and on and on. Uh, but at the nucleus of that is a story that you're telling uh, and, uh, you know, bringing, bringing more people in, um, you know, to, to, to that, that story along the way. So with the, uh, you mentioned the, broad use cases and, and markets and segments to the, uh, customer base, uh, how, how would you articulate the main brand story and, and what have you observed really resonates with, with buyers? For us, everything really starts with our core mission, um, which is to empower the world to design. And like, that's at the, the crux of, of, of our story, I think. Uh, and you know, that mission emerged from this belief. It was a crazy belief at the time that no matter your income, where you lived in the world or your skill level, you too should be able to design. Uh, and that's really been at the core of what we've been building towards and the story that we've been telling uh, for you know, the last decade or so uh, now. And, uh, you know, that, that story kind of comes to life in different ways, whether we're uh, you know, re rewinding and, and thinking about those first people that got on board with the platform. Um, you know, we, we had very early success with social media marketers and content creators. Uh, and for them, 
you know, they were creating content um, day in, day out and, you know, pressured to turn things around quicker uh, and uh, more frequently than, than sort of ever before. And so, you know, there was uh, that, that story resonating with them. Um, fast forward to today and we've got, uh, you know, 85% of the Fortune 500s uh, using Canva, huge kind of organisational adoption uh, these days as well. Uh, and that notion of, of everyone being not only able, but also needing to create, uh, you know, resonates, um, more than ever, um, today. So, uh, you know, it's the same story, um, with, uh, with different characters, I would say. That's, that's really cool. It, it's, it's somewhat rare, I think, or, or like it so often can feel forced, um, when everyone talks about being mission driven or it all starts with why and and like we we love that work you know we love digging in on on vision and and figuring out how to like connect that to the story um you know we've grappled with it sometimes with our own company that like sometimes you have this like super lofty vision but then you're making like do, you know donuts or something <laughs> um but the it's so cool that you guys had such a core like piece of your brand heart with the mission that like directly translates to what you build like that's got to be like at least one key ingredient in your success you know that it's like just such a clear mission and people can see like what you're building every day points at that um when you when you thought about or when you when you thought about like actually bringing that into your story like what what was that like what was the process you took or any highlights from that over the years? Yeah, for sure. And I think for us, there's really two elements to bringing something to life. Um, certainly in, in our case, and it, it's like on one hand, it's mission. So like, what is that crazy big North star that you're, you're rallying towards? Uh, and so for us, empowering the world to design. And then part two is like our, our core value is to set crazy big goals and, and to make them happen. So it's like setting those goals along the way to that North star. So on a, on sort of a practical um, level for us, that mission of empowering the world to design, or I'm sure will be something that we're rallying towards for um forevermore. You know, we've got 130 million people, but there's uh, literally billions of people uh, around the world. And so, you know, we, we believe that they all have, have a, uh, a need to express themselves and communicate. Uh, and so, you know, that, that North star of, of sort of, uh, constantly striving towards that. And then, um, and then we set, you know, goals, um, along the way that, that help us, um, move towards, uh, that, that mission, whether it's, you know, launching new products that broaden out the use case or, um, leaning into, you know, different markets and, and things like that. Um, in terms of digging into the story, I, uh, I think one thing that's true for us is the importance of that story resonating both internally, um, and externally. And so, you know, for us, we always think about, uh, communications in terms of what's the narrative for our team and how do we have, um, you know, a shared vision that we're working towards. Uh, and then, you know, the kind of concentric circles out that obviously extends out to our community and, um, and, and sort of beyond. Uh, and so, you know, some of the ways that I'd say that we've done that, we use obviously visual communication, um, a lot in, internally, um, but really do a lot of like visual storytelling, uh, within um, Canva uh, as well. So this tradition goes back, you know, many, many years now with our, um, our season openers internally, but they, they sort of started um, rather than doing a quarterly kickoff every three months, we bring the whole company together and uh, each team in the company would get up and basically share their pitch or their vision for what they were building towards and, and share their kind of wins with the rest of the organization. Um, and it was, an, it's been an incredible way and continues to be an incredible way to bring the whole company together, um, you know, around that, that shared sense of mission, but also build, um, the skill of being able to tell a story, um, you know, with people, uh, internally, um, that becomes, I think, a narrative for you know, how we talk about, um, what we're doing externally as well. 
When when you dig in, like you mentioned, the importance even of the or, or getting that alignment internally and externally. Is there is there a process that you really believe in, or or an approach that you've enjoyed and felt like you really got to a good place on the story with? I think it starts with uh, this this notion of of like presenting a story and and to go back to. Um, you know, the very, very early days when Mel and, and Cliff were pitching investors, trying to get people on board with this mission that they, um, you know, had set out to pursue, to empower the world to design. They literally pitched, you know, hundreds of investors. Mel spent months in San Francisco sleeping on her brother's couch. Like they were desperately trying to get anyone um, that they could interested to find co-found, a co-founder, um, you know, technical team. Um, so it was really, it was a really hard slog in those early days and they were rejected, um, you know, more, more times than, than you, um, you can imagine for all sorts of things. Uh, but I guess one of the things that, um, they took away from that experience was that each rejection is actually a point to optimize from. So, you know, you do your pitch, people ask certain questions. Next time you do the pitch, front load those questions, make sure they get addressed, do it again, different questions come up again, like that cycle. Um, and so you're basically testing a narrative and refining a narrative um, through the actual delivery. And even, even more recently, you know, we've taken that approach. We just had a big uh, moment for, for Canva with our Canva Create event. It was our second one. Uh, in, in March and our first one we did in, in September and uh, we launched a whole host of new products uh, there. Uh, and, you know, it was an amazing, amazing moment with our community. We had over one and a half million people from our community um, registered to, to tune in and watch. So incredible excitement about the new products and, and features that we were launching. But there's really two elements um, that we were adding into the product experience. Um, one was introducing a host of new AI tools um, to power our visual suite. So making it easier you know, to create a presentation or video or document um, using things like uh, uh, magic design where you could describe a design and it'd automatically be generated, um, you know, text generation with, with our magic right tool or being able to even um, you know, create an image from, from a word prompt. Um, so that was the AI piece. And then the second piece was uh, what we've called brand hub. So um, this new offering where uh, brands of all sizes can uh, throw out the 200 page PDF brand book and organize everything in, in one place in Canva in a way that uh, the brand guidelines can actually be accessed and, and sort of kept up to date for everyone in the organization. So in the process of actually preparing for that event, um, we went on the road and spent a lot of time with marketers, creatives, agencies, um, going through the story and sharing the new features and, uh, you know, the, the kind of like insights that you get from watching a small group or even one person's reaction, um, to that story, uh, really help refine it in a way that, uh, is impactful, um, at scale too. And so I think that the core you know, take away from, from both those experiences is, uh, that you refine a story by, by telling it. That's great. Yeah. Rejection as a point, point to optimize from is a great, <laughs> great point of view. It's good quotable. Yeah. <laughs> Got to polish it into a diamond, right? That's yeah. right. <laughs> so I saw Jason's, uh, eyes get real wide and you start talking about all these magic tools and I want to dig into those. <laughs> Um, but before we do, I had a question for you. You touched on um, just how long you've been working on this for, and not just you, but the whole team. And also you touched on just how many people are involved in telling the story. Um, I'm just really curious to understand as a creative, as a marketer, uh, where do you go for, uh, for inspiration and how do you and the team stay inspired? Um, obviously, you're in the trenches or doing the work all day, every day. Got a visitor? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Nice. Oh, no worries. He's off to school. <laughs> no, no worries at all. Um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
some people don't understand like just how much work it is and for how long it takes to uh, really build something. And so um, we know from having done this for a long time now that there can be times where you just don't feel like in, you're inspired or like you have it. So I'm yeah, just curious uh, to hear a little bit from you about how you approach that. Yeah, a few thoughts. Um, firstly, I think it's natural. Uh, things ebb and flow and there are peaks and troughs. And so um, I think that's really important to acknowledge. Um, and then secondly, uh, I think inspiration comes from all sorts of different places. Um, you know, for me, I uh, read a lot. I um, I also have gotten a ton of value from different advisors over the years. And so, uh, you know, I think um, those elements that can draw you out of your current um, problems or, uh, you know, the, the, the stuff that's going on for you day to day and draw you out and give you perspective um, are, are the things that can really help with um, perspective um, and inspiration or just the, you know, the tools and skills to tackle something, you know, that, that's a new frontier um, uh, as well. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so are there any uh, brands that, that you look up to or that you feel are uh, telling stories particularly well that you look at and say, all right, we can learn something from them? Um, so many. <laughs> uh and I think, you know, there's something to draw from, from almost every brand, right? Uh, you know, whether it's Patagonia and the way that they've just woven purpose through everything um, that they do. I think that's an incredible example of, of that. Um, you know, Airbnb for their mission of, um, you know, connecting, connecting the world uh, around, around travel. Um, you know, so on and, and so forth. So I think there's definitely something to take from um, from every brand, and and you know, we definitely uh, look at look at different elements, um, you know, that that, that we're, we're inspired by or, or might want to um, emulate um, as well. You know, Target in the US has done an incredible job of uh, supporting education and and you know being synonymous um, with, with that. Uh, Impossible Foods, I think, has done. Uh, uh, an incredible job of, you know, kind of normalizing um, and establishing that category. Um, so yeah, so many examples. Yeah, that's great. You, you mentioned your background and love for journalism. Um, I, I'm curious, you know, whether it's writing or, or something else, what, what's the work that you like to really get in, in the weeds on still? One of the things I love most about my role is the breadth and you know, the fact that I can be diving deep on you know, PR and comms um, next minute, social media, next minute brand strategy. Um, so, you know, I think I'm really fortunate in this role that there's the constant ability to learn and to, to sink my teeth into different uh, topics um, as well. The thing that I get a real kick out of though, I'd say is like spending that face time with uh, real members of, of our community, um, you know, kind of gearing up for uh, Canva Create was a really enjoyable experience, spending time with um, you know, this, this kind of world, our world, marketers and creatives uh, and, you know, exploring the new features and functionality, the things that were kind of top of their mind, challenges, pain points, um, refining, refining, um, you know, the, the story on, on that front. So like nothing really beats, um, really beats uh, spending that time, I'd say like face-to-face -face, um, with, with our community. That's awesome. I, I, I'm sure that, I, I think I've heard that before about, about you all too, just that you really like just to have a ton of, of isn't there like a like a 24 hour live like discussion or something like users can come in and like talk to your team 24 hours a day or it wasn't it didn't sound like it, it sounded like it was beyond support it's kind of a fuzzy memory but 
kind of constant customer interviews kind of going on? We have a uh, an incredible community and, and so have, have sort of built these communities around um, some of the different you know, groups of, of folks that we have using the platform. So um, there's an incredible community of teachers as an example. Like I think it's like 300,000 teachers now um, that come together, uh, you know, share their lesson plans, their classroom tips and tricks um, with, uh, with each other. Uh, you know, there's uh, 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 communities that, that sort of extend into social media and content creators and, and, and things like that um, as well. So um, that's been, you know, incredible to see um, that come to life and, and see our community, um, you know, not, not just kind of using the product, but, but actually helping um, others to, to achieve um, their goals uh, as well. That's great. Um, all right, Zach. So uh, there's a lot that's changing right now um, in the economy. Um, uh, a lot of folks say we're in a recession. A lot of folks say that we're on our way towards a recession. Uh, regardless of your perspective on that, uh, you have to acknowledge at least that the economy is shifting right now. And uh, from your perspective, what does that mean for us brand people and marketers? It's a really tough time for, uh, for a lot of folks um, at the moment. And, uh, you know, I think that's definitely being felt um, for, for marketing uh, organizations uh, as well. I'd say the you know things that that we're hearing um, obviously a focus on uh, efficiency and so doing more um, doing more with less being able to create um, you know content and, and sort of um, deliver impact um, a focus on obviously profitable growth so um, you know efficiency is really a um, a, a big focus. Um, you know, as, as marketers are sort of looking at looking at their budgets and, and looking at where um, where they're spending um, uh, as well, uh, and you know, and, and a sort of emphasis on uh, getting that that sort of marketing mix right. Um, you know, to to be delivering, uh, you know, not just in terms of long term growth, but also those those short term um, needs that, that I think organisations are facing right now too. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So, so you touched on the uh, integration of of AI, and this is obviously, uh, I don't, you know, probably fifty times a day, people <laughs> talking about and speculating about what's happening with AI. And uh, I, I'm I'm really curious, you know, and and I can totally see it and see where you're going with this. Um, make makes a lot of sense, but in, in the current moment. You know, how are you leveraging AI in your products? You mentioned the release at Canva Create. It's definitely the topic on everyone's lips right now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's the thing. <laughs> um, and yeah, for us, I guess we have been really uh, looking at ways to bring the new technology into our platform. Uh, and for us, it, it starts like with the, the mission, um, you know, which is to make design um, simple and, and accessible uh, for everyone. I guess Canva really was born at a time of technological change. It was really uh, only possible to launch Canva because technology was evolving. We had, uh, you know, tablets and, and sort of smartphones entering the market. Uh, social platforms were becoming more visual. High-speed internet was becoming uh, more accessible. And so all of those things meant that design could be reimagined to not come in a box and to be available online, um, you know, and, and all the things that um, we've, we've since built out there. And so we see this moment in time as being uh, a similar period of uh, technical, uh, sorry, technological um, evolution. And so that's opening up um, whole new possibilities to deliver on that ability to um to create and so we look at things like ai uh, as uh ways that we can actually simplify um you know that that design process and so that's what we uh, have really focused on with the the launch of our our magic tools as we've been calling them so 
Um, you know, it's really about getting from that idea that someone has in their head to the end design um, as quickly uh, as possible. So, you know, from the start of the design journey, um, being able to describe what you'd like and have a presentation automatically generated for you to uh, helping you with writing copy or summarizing your text, helping find the perfect image, helping to translate your design, you know, so you, you can scale your campaign into multiple markets. And so um, everything that, that we've been looking at is, is really how do we simplify um, and shorten that, that design um, process as, as quickly as possible. The thing that is, we believe, the thing that we believe is going to be consistent is people will still wake up with a job to do in the morning. Um, you know, people aren't waking up thinking, oh, I really want to use AI. They're thinking I need to deliver um, a great lesson in my class today. I want to uh, win that client pitch. Uh, I want to grow my small business. So there's there's like a practical goal that, that people are, are starting with and they're coming to platforms you know, like Canva and, uh, uh, and others to, to do that. And so what, um, what we can do, I guess, is, is take that new technology and, um, and make that even easier and, and sort of more impactful for them. Hmm. Yeah. I really appreciate how you, uh, framed your answer to Jay's question there by going back to the mission. I think that's, uh, uh, super helpful. Um, not only in context of a podcast like this and our discussion, but in terms of, thinking about how any company ought to respond to any change in whether it's technology or the economy, like really framing the perspective through the lens of how does this, how ought this be informed by what we're here to do? Um, and I'm just curious to kind of dig a bit further. Is there anything beyond what you've just shared um, as AI innovation has become more and more mainstream that really represents like the quote unquote unique Canva take on what it will mean for us and um, marketing as a whole in the future? Like, is there a perspective or white paper that Canva might be publishing or is there something else that maybe uh, you're producing to sort of say like, this is what we believe and why? Uh, I'd say our, I mean, our take is, you know, exactly that, that every new technology, uh, introduces you know, new ways to, to achieve, achieve a goal, but, um, you know, technology is like a tool, right? And so, uh, I mean, it, it, it kind of needs to be in service, um, of, of something. And so our mission, um, you know, hasn't changed uh, at all, but, um, to your point, uh, there's this new avenue that's emerged that can actually help us get towards our mission, um, you know, quicker, um, than and it may be in ways that we um we we couldn't have have ever predicted uh i guess like our our thought is that you know ai really has the potential to be a co-pilot um i, I actually you know over the past few months was, was spending some time on the road with marketers and, and creatives and uh, one of the most interesting conversations i had was with a creative director in um you know well-known new york agency and and so speaking to him it was super interesting. Uh, you know, we were discussing AI and uh, his team's kind of sentiment um, towards it. And he said what he had done was basically to introduce another member of the team into his creative team. Um, and so AI basically had a seat at the table. And so he was treating it as an additional member of the team, you know, to bounce ideas off, to refine um, creative work. Uh, but the interesting thing was it wasn't, um, you know, a, a team member that was being elevated or diminished, um, compared to the rest of the team it was an equal, um, equal player. And I think that's a really interesting way, um, to think about it. You know, how does it become an enabler or an accelerator, um, to help make work, uh, stronger, um, and, and, and better. Um, you know, and I think we're, we're seeing more and more people think about it, um, in that way. You touched on something really interesting there about kind of this relationship towards being able to actualize your ideas, you know, and, and that like, maybe even when you think about maybe the original manifestation being a bit more about, um, maybe empowering people with the skill of designing that like, it's maybe moving 
a little bit more towards like just making it possible to get the result than result you want more quickly or, you know, as far as like at least the AI supported piece of it. Um, it's kind of a debate for the ages too on like the role of human creativity in there. Like I like how you talked about it as a co-pilot. Um, but how do you think, how do you think AI will actually help human creativity? Again, or I guess creativity in general, I guess it could be in yeah. collaboration with that co-pilot mindset. Again, I'd like go back, um, you know, and, and look at history. I think uh, I was chatting to someone um, recently in in Hollywood, in the, in the film industry, and and they were saying, uh, you know, it's it's kind of wild to think back, but there was a lot of people that were resistant when um, motion pictures came out with sound, and they were like, <laughs> "That's not a movie," you know. We we um we have this craft we need to protect and um, there was a lot of resistance to to that and like we look back at that now and think that's just like that's crazy imagine um, movies without without sound and so uh, I think like every technological wave is um, met with a mix of like insight, excitement and enthusiasm as well as um, apprehension but from like electricity to the telephone to um, you know the printing press to uh, motion pictures, uh, every shift in technology has opened up um, whole new domains of uh, creation um, and creativity. Even more recently, right? Like the you know this thing in my hand, my my phone, uh, the camera built into everyone's pocket now is totally transformed the way that we create video and content, you know, things like YouTube, um, TikTok, uh, the explosion in, in photography. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, these waves uh, have changed the way that we communicate um, and express ourselves. But I'd argue that there's more creative expression now than, than ever before. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I think that's something that can only continue. Yeah, with it with it becoming more automated or accessible to get certain designs done, uh, what what do you think is the role, or or what what's the future for human designers? The the role uh, I think that we're seeing emerge is uh, is a few things. Like I, I think the you know, if, if we look just more recently at the explosion in content um, and, and what that's meant for design as, as one example, um, you know, this, this complete acceleration in, um, you know, new formats and platforms has had um, every brand struggling to keep up with the volume of content that needs to be created um, these days. And what it's meant is that we've gone from, you know, only really a few decades ago, marketing creative teams literally producing or, you know, working with an agency to produce one TV spot and maybe, uh, you know, print design and something for out of home. And you had like three assets and that was your, um, you know, multi-million dollar campaign to these days. It's like you're, you're publishing content multiple times a day on every platform. Um, if you're, uh, you know, producing spots for YouTube or, or digital, um, you know, there's like, like literally dozens of assets, um, maybe even hundreds of assets. And so, the volume of creative that has been needed has um, really accelerated at an exponential rate. Uh, and what that's actually meant is finding you know, different ways to create and scale that content. Um, and for creative teams, uh, a lot more importance put on like systems design and systems thinking, how do you actually build a brand architecture, a creative platform that can scale. Um, and as you know, multiple people um, other people in your organization are creating content. Um, how do you enable them to express and, and sort of push that concept in different directions, um, but have that connectivity to the core kind of platform um, and, and mission? And so I, I think that um, that notion of like design becoming more about, um, you know, creation and, and sort of definition of, of, of systems um, and becoming the creation of, of sort of languages and, and toolkits for people to use um, is uh, is a big 
a, a big one, um, you know, and that's going to continue um, to to evolve. Uh, the other thing I think with with AI is that uh, it is you know introducing this kind of new um, vernacular to engage with technology. Right at the moment, um, it comes back to oftentimes like a text box where we're um, you know saying. Uh, giving giving a prompt um, to your uh, uh, your example earlier, <laughs> you know, saying please and thank you. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but you know, depending on the way that we're um, describing things, there are literally you know millions of per- permutations, and so um, I think like that whole um, you know field of uh, of how do you give the right inputs to drive creative outputs um, is, is sort of a really interesting um, evolution um, too. So, uh, you know, I think we're, we're seeing a lot of this stuff um, uh, uh, emerge, but at, at the core is still this idea of, um, you know, human creativity um, and, uh, uh, you know, being able to, to sort of create and define um, uh, those systems and, and sort of brand architectures as well. With the with the systems thinking, and that that really resonates with us. I I think we we often think of you know our work on the brand development and you know content marketing strategy and and you know even down to like the like governance and who's doing what. Um, that's like part of the system, but certainly the and the tools you're using. And it's been pretty fascinating to me to think about you know even just in doing a visual identity or, or when you're on, when you're creating from a visual identity to think about how, you know, usually you get your brand book, right? You have logo type colors and then some amazing illustrations that like maybe 95% of your company couldn't possibly leverage, like actually recreate or riff on, you know, um, which is, you know, great for designers and represents like their moat or, or skill set. Um, but it's interesting, it's interesting what you're saying there in, in like the role of the designer, potentially even shifting, I could see that shifting to actually being the person who's really good at creating that system. And, you know, depending on the platform you're using, whether you're specifically talking about visual content to say like, here's the prompts and the set of reference images. And like, if you, you know, the model's trained. So if you put in like. I need this graphic, um, you know, that you put in your subject matter and the rest of the prompt that's in the book, you can be like reasonably confident you're going to land on something that fits the brand guidelines, you know? Uh, do you, do you think of that kind of system being supported in Canva? Like in, in terms of like being able to, to like use, you know, everyone can create great AI generated images but then you have that challenge of like, what's on brand, right? Is, is this still on brand? Do you do you think of it solving that challenge eventually, if not now? We um we just launched the Canva Brand Hub, and so the, the um you know that really marks a, a big step um for us in ex- exactly um that problem space. Uh, you know, speaking to many creative teams um, over the, the past uh, few years, there's uh, there's a whole host of challenges that, that they've been facing. Um, you know, number one is is keeping up with the volume of content. Um, you know, they're, they're just uh, overworked, they're bottlenecked, they're inundated with, um, you know, small requests from, from across the organisation. Um, number two, they spend... Um, all this time uh, and, you know, leverage their craft to build beautiful brands um, and the, you know, the love and care that goes in um, still gets handed off in a 200 page PDF brand book that, that no one else in the organization can use. And so, um, you know, I guess with the launch of Brand Hub, we set out to solve um, those two problems. So, uh We've got, you know, people in organizations, everyone from marketers to you know, HR folk to, to salespeople using the Canva platform because um, they find it easy. 
uh, which means that we can, uh, you know, introduce brand guidelines in uh, in a whole new way that gives the the keys to the creative team so they can go in and save their colors, logos, fonts, assets, uh, you know, input all of their guidelines in a way that's actually living and can be kept up to date, but can actually then um, act as a guardrail or, um, you know, a, a rule book that the rest of the organization, um, you know, are, are designing to. And so I think, uh, you know, we're definitely seeing that convergence of brand definition in the same place where people are creating. Uh, and I think, you know, obviously as, um, as technology, um, uh, evolves, there's really kind of exciting, uh, uh, ways that we can make that, um, you know, even easier and, and sort of more, um, uh, powerful for, for creative teams. Yeah. Uh, to what extent uh, do the challenges that the Canva marketing team experiences with respect to creating content at scale while maintaining brand integrity, uh, to what extent are those informing the actual Canva product design and feature set? <laughs> Uh, a great deal, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah, we've, we've, um, you know, we've evolved as an organization uh, a lot over the past 10 years, as I'm sure you can imagine. So yeah. Canva's now 3,500 people um, globally. Uh, our marketing team's, um, you know, a couple hundred folk. Now uh, we're international, so we're in uh, 100 languages, 190 markets, uh, you know, complexity in terms of um, different markets, different communities that we're, we're engaging with. So, um, you know, we've definitely been um, customer zero, I'd say on, yeah. on a lot of fronts and, um, you know, a lot of the things that, uh, that we built into the product have, have definitely been, um, you know, starting with, with solving our, our own use case uh, <laughs> as well. Uh, and then with respect to the new AI um, technology that you're building with uh, Magic Design and Magic Write, uh, how much of the content that you're creating uh, through your marketing team is powered um, by all this? We're using, uh, we're using a lot of the functionality in, in different ways. So, um, you know, I'd say we, uh, we have evolved like the, the Canva brand hub, you know, through our own use cases and, and really scaled um, that out. Uh, and then, um, you know, on, on the AI front, I'm definitely using it in, um, in all sorts of different ways. Um, it's been fun actually the past few days, there's been, um, you know, this kind of trend emerging of, of people, uh, hacking their, uh, their headshots. So, you know, you, you kind of like have a photo, um, that you really like, you like the look of the photo, but you're not like professional at all. So the photo is great, but you like wish you were wearing, um, a more professional outfit. And so we've seen, um, you know, all these people on, on TikTok using, um, magic edit, which is the, the photo editing tool to like, you know, hover over their t-shirt and turn it into a suit or, um, you know, change their, like, uh, their, 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 uh, their dress into to something more formal. Um, and so, you know, having a lot of fun, um, uh, fun with, with things like that, uh, we're using, you know, text generation. Um, a ton for social, um, you know, generating copy ideas, uh, sort of brainstorming and, and, and things like that. So, um, you know, we're definitely in a phase, I'd say internally where we're, um, we're experimenting and, and sort of, uh, figuring out and, and filling out, uh, not just the kind of novel use cases, but where, um, where all this stuff can, can really support our, um, our workflows, uh, too. Um, the other one that's a big, favorite of mine is magic translate. Uh, you know, as you can imagine, operating in a hundred languages, uh, comes with all sorts of challenges from a marketing point of view. And so that was one that was really sparked by our, um, our own internal use case. And so, um, you know, that's pretty powerful being able to, um, now create a campaign, um, you know, in, in English, uh, and, and be able to get, uh, sort of quick versions of, of that content out in, in, um, uh, hundred, hundred languages as well. You, yeah. your uh, the, the headshot example made me think you guys, should do a campaign like this. The suit industry hates this one simple trick. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go buy Sorry a suit to all for the a wedding. Sorry, out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> just yeah, just show up in a t-shirt and 
board shorts and then edit your photo <laughs> later. <laughs> Yeah, those are super cool. I've actually seen uh, a number of those on LinkedIn. The the oh, have you? screen capture videos of people showing how to use Magic Edit. So um, yeah, uh, cool. <laughs> yeah, super super cool. Um, well, Zach, hey, it was so nice um, chatting with you. Uh, thanks for being on. If people want to learn more about you and and follow you um, on your journey, where is the best place for them to find you online? Uh, hit us up on LinkedIn. Cool, and it's. Uh, you mind uh, spelling your name out for folks? Yeah, it's, it? a, it's a long one. Zach, Z-A-C-H, Kitschke, K-I-T-S-C-H-K-E. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Thank Zach. Thank you so much, Zach. Thanks, guys. Column 5's Best Story Wins is for marketing and branding professionals looking to unlock their growth potential. Each episode features a conversation with industry leaders about how they win the hearts and minds of their customers and build world-class brands. You'll learn about their success stories and their failures, as well as ideas for how to take your own marketing efforts to the next level. Welcome to Best Story Wins.